Who should we trust, Jesus or Muhammad? If the Bible holds true, then Jesus is unmistakably the Son of God, the Messiah, and God revealed in the flesh. On the flip side, if the Quran's accounts are accurate, then Jesus was merely a prophet. Dive into this thought-provoking discussion between Cliff and a Muslim student, where these pivotal questions are brought to the forefront. What we learned about Jesus, peace yep. be upon him, is that we love him. Yes. We love all the prophets, Moses, Abraham, and we adore them and we follow them. Yep. We learn in the Bible that Jesus used to fall on his face in prayer, and we do that five times a day. Beautiful. We learn that Jesus worshipped the one true God, and that's who we follow. So my question is that as a Muslim who loves and adores and follows the teachings of Jesus, will I be punished or go to hell if I don't follow your idea? of what Jesus was or what he taught according to Christianity. If Muhammad spoke the truth, I'm going to hell because I'm a blasphemer. I'm worshiping Jesus as God. So if Muhammad spoke the truth, I am going to hell. If Jesus spoke the truth, that he's God in human form who bled and died on a cross to forgive me and to give me eternal life, if Jesus spoke the truth, I'm going to heaven because my faith is in him. Why would I choose to trust Jesus instead of Muhammad? Because although I have a great deal of respect for Muhammad, like one of the five pillars, give alms to the poor, I obviously respect that. I I obviously respect the way Muhammad believed that Jesus was born of a virgin, lived a sinless life, ascended to heaven, coming back a second time. I agree with all of that. Muhammad made a crucial mistake. He denied the deity of Christ. Now, when was Muhammad born? 570 AD, which means he obviously never met Christ. But Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, excuse me, Matthew, Mark, John, Peter, James met Christ. And they all insisted that Christ claimed to be God. Repeatedly in the Quran, he stated, Jesus is not God. He's a good prophet but he's not God. Repeatedly in the New Testament it stated, Jesus is God in human form. Now I have a decision to make. Who am I going to trust? A man who lived 500 years after the fact or people who lived during the life of Christ met him and talked with him? Sir, when it comes to historical knowledge, that's a no-brainer for me. I will always try and go back and connect with the eyewitnesses to be my primary source of information about any historical person. If you think I'm going to trust the guys who flew plane into the U.S. Trade World Trade Center to be my primary source source of information about Muhammad, you're nuts. I think that's bigotry. To find out about Muhammad, I better have the intellectual honesty to read the Quran. And if I use some terrorist as a reason to reject Muhammad, I'm a narrow-minded bigot. So, if you're seriously considering Islam, you better read the Quran. And all I'm doing is standing here saying, if you're really interested about Jesus Christ, you owe it to yourself to read the Gospel, the eyewitness accounts of Jesus, and ask yourself, does the evidence point to him being reliable or not? Does that make sense? It does. So, I... First of all, I respect you a lot for telling people to read the Quran. I 100% agree. Yep. I used to be a Christian and I finished the Bible. I read it myself. Yep. I had issues with the deity of Christ itself after reading the Bible because yeah. you said that who do we trust? Muhammad, peace be upon him, or Jesus upon him? I said that Muhammad, first of all, did not author the Quran. He was a messenger of the words of God. The Quran claims to be the infallible word of God itself, whereas the Bible was written by humans themselves as gospels according to Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, whereas the Quran claims to be the word of God itself self-transferred through prophets and as an oral tradition. The Quran isn't even a book. Okay. The Quran is an oral tradition. My friend here has memorized the whole thing cover to cover okay. because it's an oral tradition, not a okay. book. Fair enough. So the reason why we give preference to the Quran over the Bible is because, first of all, it's preserved in its original language that's Arabic? less Arabic, yeah. whereas Jesus spoke Aramaic. He did yeah. not speak Greek. He did not speak Hebrew. He spoke Aramaic. So we are learning about Jesus in a language that he didn't even speak, first of all. And also, when you read the Bible, you see multiple verses where Jesus says when someone came up to him and said, oh, good teacher. He said, why do you call me good? Only the Father is good. In another passage, he says, no, he says only God is good. Only God is good. Right? But why would he create the distinction between him not being good, but saying God is good? Because the guy said, good teacher. Teacher. So he was his teacher at the time. No, 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 no. And Jesus says right there, time out. If you're simply going to acknowledge I'm a teacher, don't give me this gibberish that I'm good because nobody's good except God. But Jesus obviously claimed to be good. He obviously claimed to be God. But the guy was not acknowledging it. He was denying it. Good teacher. That's why. I understand that's your interpretation, but there's other passages in where he says, do not worship me, worship the one who said, he said the Father is where greater than I. Where did he say I. that? He does never says don't worship me. He says the Father is greater than I. Yes. Everything I do is through the will of the Father. Why yes. create that distinction between him and the Father if he's claiming equivalency with the Father himself? Because he humbled himself, limited himself, and passed down the birth canal of a woman named Mary, and he was a human being who was not omnipresent. He lived in Palestine, and he never visited Austin, Texas, or the Big Apple, or Saudi Arabia. So he obviously limited himself as the omnipresent 
omnipresent God, he limits himself, becomes a human being, and yeah, the Father's greater than I. Everything I do is through the power of the Father. Nothing I do is of my own action. Why would he say that if he's not God himself, if he doesn't have the power to do all these things, then why would he call himself God? The answer that we have is he doesn't. He calls himself a prophet, a messenger of God. And what teaches? I believe. What he okay, said, I fine. Believe. But don't you understand? If you stand there and say the Quran is the word of God, and I stand here and say the New Testament's the word of God, that's going to get us nowhere. Because you we cannot show textual... the Quran's the word of God the same way I cannot can. show that the New Testament's the word of God. Absolutely can. No, you cannot. Yes, we can. You cannot show that any book is the word of God. It's impossible. Are you historic, like, familiar with the process of mass transmission, right? How do we know anything happened in the history of the world? How do we know the Roman Empire existed? It's because everyone says the Roman Empire existed. It's called mass transmission. Hundreds of thousands are agreeing on the same thing. It is taken as fact, historic, as a historical principle. So hundreds of thousands of people believe the Quran's the word of God, and hundreds of thousands of people believe the Bible's the word of God. So what does that tell you? It tells us what that, that yes, we believe the Injil, the gospel that was given to Jesus Christ, is the word of God. However, we don't believe it was preserved properly, and the Bible we have today is not the Bible that was given to Jesus, because he spoke Aramaic, and the Bible, the oldest Bible we have now is written in Greek. It cannot be the same. It's impossible. However, Quran given to Muhammad, peace be upon him, is in Arabic. It's memorized in Arabic. He's memorized the whole thing in Arabic. Can I have a Good for him. Good for him. I have a chain of narration connecting the Quran. I have memorized Good. the Quran. Muhammad revealed in that. Guys, I'm sorry. You're not listening to me. We're not making any headway. Okay? Have a great day. Okay? All right, guys. Let's tackle the Muslims' points. Firstly, when discussing the preservation of the Bible, it's crucial to understand that we have manuscripts dating back to as early as 300 AD, centuries before Muhammad's time. This is significant because it means the texts that Muhammad would have been aware of are essentially the same as those we read today. These manuscripts, found across different regions, affirm the core messages and events of the Bible as we know it. Regarding the original languages of the Bible, Hebrew, Aramaic, and Greek, there's a wealth of manuscripts that provide a foundation for modern translations. Skeptics of translation accuracy have a direct line to these original texts. Regardless of their beliefs, Greek scholars can attest to the fidelity of translations based on these manuscripts. The language of the Bible isn't a barrier to understanding, it's a bridge to the past. The diversity of biblical manuscripts is another point of strength. Despite variations like the Byzantine text type or the Alexandrian text type, these manuscripts remarkably agree on the essential events and teachings of Christianity. Key events, such as the crucifixion and resurrection of Jesus, his birth from a virgin, his miracles, the Sermon on the Mount, and his claims to divinity are consistently documented across these texts. The uniformity in these accounts across various manuscript families underscores a significant level of accuracy and reliability in what we understand about Jesus and his teachings. It's not just about having a lot of manuscripts, but about what these manuscripts tell us. They converge on the central narratives of the Christian faith, demonstrating a harmonious transmission of its foundational events and teachings through centuries. This consistency is not a minor detail, but a profound testament to the Bible's historical and theological reliability.